Democrats are fired up and turning out to vote in record numbers. Republicans aren't. Why not? Perhaps a problem with John McCain and the conservative base. For more on this, our Mary Snow joins us from New York. Mary. Memo to presumptive Republican presidential nominee Senator John McCain from conservative evangelical leader James Dobson. You're still not there yet. The focus on the family founder tells the Wall Street Journal, I have seen no evidence that Senator McCain is successfully unifying the Republican Party or drawing conservatives into his fold. McCain's response? We continue to work with our conservative base and I'm very proud, as I say, of the of the empirical data that shows we have very strong support amongst all elements of our party. McCain has a rocky history with conservative evangelicals. In 2000, he angered them when he called the Reverend Jerry Falwell an agent of intolerance. He made amends with Falwell before his death. McCain has been reaching out to evangelicals. Ralph Reed, the former Christian coalition leader, supports McCain and says he's building bridges. But, read cautions. The fact that uh, not just Jim Dobson, but that an awful lot of other pro-family and socially conservative voters don't yet feel ready to lick the envelopes, work the phone banks, knock the doors and ring on doorbells is a danger sign that needs attention. Dobson is critical of McCain, among other things, for not supporting a constitutional ban on same-sex marriages. Dobson has a daily radio show and touts one and a half million listeners. Reed says Dobson's voice among evangelicals is just one among many. Uh, because someone is a leader doesn't mean that everyone marks, uh, marches in lockstep like sheep. Global warming and the economy have become big issues. It's a much broader agenda, which makes it harder to determine exactly where evangelicals are going to go. But Republicans want them in their corner, since they proved pivotal in electing George Bush. One Republican strategist and former Romney aide says issues important to evangelicals can't be discounted. That is very important to them, that they feel that they're part of the process, that you understand them, and that you're going to carry those issues with you to the White House. <clears throat> A report from our Mary Snow in New York. So just how significant is this? Dr. Dobson criticizing John McCain. Is it the sign of a broad problem with the conservative Christian Republican base or just one man criticizing the Republican nominee in waiting? Joining us to talk about that and more, the Family Research Council President Tony Perkins and the Reverend Jim Wallace. Tony, let me start with you. You're in many of these meetings that Dr. Dobson is at where conservative leaders say, is this our guy or where do we want the political agenda to go regardless of who the candidates are? Is he on base? Has John McCain, he says John McCain has failed to reach out and is fracturing the party, not unifying the party. I, I think that we've got to be clear. We're not looking for John McCain to turn his campaign into the uh, straight and narrow express. But we do believe that he has to address the issues that are uh, of concern to social conservatives. I mean, we know that he will keep the Mer uh, America safe and our way of life safe. But does he really understand what the American way of life is? How fundamental faith, family, and freedom really is? He's got to talk about those issues to connect. But what are the specific issues? I mean, one of them, I assume, is his views on same-sex marriage, where he has Dick Cheney's position, that this should be up to the states. There shouldn't be a national constitutional amendment. Many in the movement disagree with that. Is that enough for someone like Dr. Dobson to say, well, then stay home. Don't vote for him or vote for no, the Democrats? I mean, and I don't think it's a matter of people staying home. I think it's what Ralph Reed said a few minutes ago. It's the enthusiasm. I believe when it's all said and done, when you evaluate the candidates, uh, more social conservatives than not are going to vote for John McCain. But uh, we saw that still there's 22 percent of Republican-leaning voters say that the party is not unified and they don't think it will be unified this fall. In 2004, there were few Republicans saying that the Republican voters saying the party was not unified. He has to have their enthusiastic support to win against an energized Democratic base. And, and Jim, can he get their support, enthusiastic or otherwise, if he has people like Dr. Dobson raising questions about him, Tony Perkins? raising questions about it. I guess the question is, do these voters, evangelical, whether they consider themselves to be far to the right, more to the middle, maybe a little bit to the left, do they take their cues from guys like you, guys like Tony, guys like Dr. Dobson, or do they make their choices around their own kitchen table? Well, this year, the big change is that evangelicals are going to become a swing vote. And the old tape is evangelical equals conservative equals Republican, was right abortion, gay marriage. That's the old tape. Evangelicals are voting on poverty, on the environment on war and peace. Uh, and young evangelicals, like Barack Obama, like all young people do, and they like issues like health care that Hillary Clinton talks about. So this time, you're going to see some real shifting of the voting. Now, 
evangelicals who are leaving Republicans are not automatically liberal Democrats. Whoever speaks a moral language of politics, whoever addresses the broad agenda they embrace now, it's no longer a two-issue agenda. It's a broad, deep agenda, and whoever speaks to that has a chance of really attracting them. You mentioned poverty in the economy. John McCain talks a lot about global, global warming and climate change, mm -hmm. something George W. Bush did not talk a lot about. You're saying perhaps Obama and Clinton could get votes where George W. Bush got votes. Can McCain get votes from evangelicals who might be left of center that would never have voted for George W. Bush? Well, with John McCain, a number of evangelicals who are critical of the war in Iraq, for example, see John McCain perhaps talking about uh, you know, permanent war, a permanent era of war. Now, that is a life issue for a number of evangelicals. So we don't want to see a permanent state of war. And so when he talks about a hundred years war, that is a turnoff to a number of evangelicals who are against the war in Iraq. Tony, what is, what is it about John McCain? He's a prickly guy. He's a stubborn guy sometimes. He was asked today about Dr. Dobbs and said, why don't you just pick up the phone? See if you guys can you know, reach an accommodation or at least know that you can't. Right. It's the old conversation about why don't we you know, sit down with Aquadinajad or somebody else. But what? the guy's against you. Why don't you reach out, have a conversation? And he says, well, he can call me. I'd take the phone call if he calls me, but he won't initiate the contact. Is that part of it? All right, based on your description, I don't guess you're going to endorse him either. But the, the, the whole idea is that there is a conversation that needs to take place. Uh, there are issues that are out there that are very, conser uh, very, cons uh, 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 very important to social conservatives. And Jim is right. I believe that the, 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 he's right on this point that I believe that the issue set has expanded in the, in the last decade. I would argue that the prioritization is different than what he says. I do believe that life and marriage remain top priority among most social conservatives. And this is the thing with John McCain. He has the base from which to, uh, the foundation from which to reach out and get the social conservative support. He has the record. But uh, most Americans, I, I agree, I don't think most Americans are going to take their cue based upon what one person says. They're going to evaluate these candidates based upon where they stand on the issues. They're not going to necessarily look at their record. They're going to look at John McCain and what he's saying on the campaign trail. They're going to feel very secure in how he talks about how he's going to defend the country. But when it comes to the family, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to life, he's gone silent on those issues. And unless he talks about them, he is not going to get that enthusiastic support from the a third of the Republican voters who say those issues are important. Well, let me be clear quick. I'll let, me, let me be clear for the record. I stay in the middle of the road with the yellow lines, but I'm kind of prickly and stubborn myself sometimes, so that was not meant as a criticism oh, by oh, any God. means. Go ahead, Jim. You want to Evangelicals are going to vote their values. They're not going to look to particular leaders to tell them how to vote, but they're going to vote all their values. There aren't just two moral values now. Younger evangelicals, for example, uh, probably think that Jesus probably cared more about the 30,000 children who died today of poverty and disease than he would about same-sex marriage amendments in Ohio. That's a shift in the agenda. And a state of permanent warfare that John McCain seems to be offering is a life issue for evangelicals. So it will be a voting of values, but voting all our values and not just one or two across the board. You, you both have agreed on the point that the issues portfolio is expanding or Absolutely. is somewhat different. Yeah. Is that because of the personalities potentially on the ballot or is it just because of what's going on in the country right now? The no. beginning of a recession, yeah. a war that whether you're for it or against it, a lot of people are tired because it's been going on so long. We live in a very complex society. You know, the issues that we face today are, are they're more than, they're, than they were 25 years ago. It's more complex and I believe also that the, the, the involvement of, of Christians in the political realm has matured and and they are bringing their perspective to the table on all of these issues and I think that's a I think that's a healthy thing and I do believe we should be wed to the issues and not the parties the last word quickly we're doing a justice revival in Columbus Ohio in two weeks billboards all over town say love God and poverty it's sponsored by the Vineyard Church, a very conservative church. The agenda is changing, and poverty now is at the heart of the agenda for many evangelicals. We'll watch it from here to November, whether it affects John McCain or not. Jim Wallace, Tony Bergen, thanks for joining us today. There's some outrage on Capitol Hill about a congressman and his new job. He lost an election, and now he's catching heat 